Our project was called Recommoning the Coast. We worked with Hayley Walcott, who lives in Struan and is very embedded within the community, which I really think helped open up people to share their own experiences. I think rather than feeling that we were parachuting in an uh, academic or a researcher to tell people how they should be working with their coastline, but actually for people to realise there was that expertise within the island. I think this project was all about that, that sort of interchange of local knowledge and scientific knowledge. To be able to take people from a community hall down onto the tidal zone to sort of really investigate these themes of the project, you know, look for different species and talk about biodiversity loss. I don't think the conversations would have been as rich. I think sort of being able to work with a researcher in that area was invaluable. The Highlands and Islands Community Climate Change Grants is funded by the UK Research and Innovation, delivered by the British Science Association and supported by Science Cayley. The programme is bringing together different projects from across the Highlands and Islands, ranging from Orkney to Eriskay on the west coast of Scotland. That for me really showcased the power and leadership that exists already around community action and explores what bringing researchers in a way that's equitable, in a way that is supported to work out what can happen when you work together. I think a lot of community-based research, but especially in rural and island-based research, has up until this point been quite extractive in terms of researchers coming into communities, taking up a lot of people's time, using up a lot of resources, and then never returning with anything that can benefit the community. There's no reason why robust academic research cannot be done in a way which also benefits the group that you're working with. Our role with Science Cayley has been really trying to recognise the expertise that already exists out in these communities, the work that is already going on and making sure that we're not reinventing the wheel and we are connected in with the wider programme. First of all, we recognised that there's communities across the UK who are disproportionately affected by climate change but they are also the same communities that often lack the kind of influence or power over the research and innovation system that are tackling these kind of challenges. UKRI has a wider ambition to break down the barriers between research, innovation and wider society. An important part of trying to achieve that is directly funding communities. So that's what we are exploring at the moment, putting the power in the community's hands, giving them the funding directly to be able to explore the challenges that are important to them in their local area. And the Highlands and Islands programme has been a really important part of developing that approach. Community engagement is a really key part of the British Science Association's work. We've got a network of over 890 community organisations across the UK and projects like this are not just about giving a grant, they're actually about development and capacity building. What we hope from this is an opportunity for communities to explore how they can work with researchers and uh, key priorities for the change that they want to see that has a real impact in their communities. I've been volunteering with Green Hive for almost two years now. And I get a lot out of doing it because I go to the orchard at the view fields and help there when I can. I'm so privileged to actually go out and help Green Hive. It helps take the, the mental health condition I've got away from the short period of time. It's given me something else to do because the only way that you, you can learn What's the do's and don'ts of that community? It's by actually talking to people. Whilst we're very aware of climate change, it does seem that some people that you speak to who live in the same area think it's going to happen somewhere else. It's not actually going to happen in them. There's always a challenge with project-based funding, and so where we can, building links in with stakeholders around what's already happening across the Highlands and Islands, focusing where we can on capacity building for groups uh, where this may be the first grant, supporting the matching process, and really learning about how so much of that is just about people. There needs to be a recognition that this is a valuable part of academia. So whether that's in about recognising this type of work and properly funding that very impact-focused research, or another way of incentivising this amongst researchers in order to say that all of these different stakeholders are on board. And if communities can show a, a real demand for this type of research, 
then that's all the stakeholders that matter. And you can really develop a, a new approach to academic research, which leads to these direct routes to impact. It's nice to have smaller pots of research funding to scope out what needs doing, but then to give the researchers and the community the opportunities to, for follow-up funding to then actually implement whatever they come up with. What I took away from it is that students, or in general, education is probably the key to some of the climate change-related social issues. I mean, there's people who deny climate change, and I think if we start in schools, there's a very high potential there to tap into that energy that young people generally have. One of the most important roles that we have to play is convening, that power of bringing and building space for communities to learn from each other, to be really open and honest. And we've been really privileged to be part of those conversations, whether through the matching process and the, the challenge, the real hard work of partnerships, giving people that space to be able to reflect. And we want to hear about what's not working, what's challenging, because within this room of people, there is absolutely the answer to that. Bringing people in the room together who have such shared passions can help to cement those relationships. The support network from Science Cayley has been, has been really useful. Um, along the line, having different meetings to kind of tap into where we are, what our struggles have been, what our successes have been, has been kind of a good set point for documenting where we are at, as well as the social side of it. Meeting the other projects has been really useful along the whole process because you were able to see the ideas coming forward from other people. Beyond the project and beyond this funding, we're really keen to make sure that these projects are supported, to be connected in with each other. That means that the learning, even if that's small, it can still build to something big within the research worlds where they can recognize that communities taking the lead is absolutely where we need to go, all the way to how we can think about working together, collaborating and sharing resources. As a unit and a group, we all pull together, like the six or seven of us, sat around the table and we'd never met each other before. Now you feel as though you have a genuine friendship. Just to have that shared community of energy and enthusiasm surrounding the climate situation and surrounding research, but community-led research especially, because a lot of research is somewhat based purely around results data-wise rather than results community-wise. And I think this is definitely a different aspect and a different approach which is a breath of fresh air in comparison to some of the other funding schemes that I've definitely been on. Today in many ways has been really emotional. People have been really honest and sharing the reflections but also the optimism and I think that's such an important thing in terms of this type of work. Ultimately climate change does affect everybody but we can already see some of the changes that are happening across the Heinz Alliance. Being able to convey that and take the kind of experience of doing community action already and then link it in with the wider ecosystem around community-based research, the, the knowledge base, the partnership that is so important. I think it's been a really interesting day just hearing everybody sharing about their experiences from both sides, both the researchers and the community organisations themselves. And there was one quote that someone gave, which was about often we see there are difficulties within communities or that the communities may be a part of the problem, but actually the true power lies in not just them being part of solutions, but they actually can be the source of solutions. And for me, that's the real takeaway in our work. And it's quite moving to hear that really recognised. <laughs>